Welcome to the 26th episode of the Who, What, When, Where, and Why podcast. My name is Kathleen Johnson, and I'm your host and the YMCA Marketing Director. My guest today is the YMCA Preschool Team Child Care Director, Sarah Dickinson, and her two head preschool teachers, Elizabeth Sickinger for AM Preschool and Grace Furness for PM pre- Preschool. So welcome, ladies, to the podcast. I'm glad you're here. Um, We are excited to introduce this crew for the 2023-24 school year and give you a glance at what they are, who they are, what their why story is, and what a day in the life of a preschooler is going to look like. Um, So let's ring the school bell. Maybe Josh will put that in there for me once we uh, get our podcast taped. Um, And we'll get started. So... Ding, ding. Are we ready? We ready? <laughs> yes. yes. All right. So is this your first podcast experience? It is. It's mine, yes. 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 Okay. So Grace is no, uh, she's not a veteran, or she is a veteran behind the mic because she does uh, some worship team leading and some praise yes. worship, which is awesome. So she might break out in song at any moment <laughs> you just in the podcast. You don't. <laughs> don't. Should we like playing her keyboard? And um, so she's good behind the mic, but these two are new. So we're hoping um, to have, it'll be a great experience, I promise. Sarah, we're going to start with you. We're going to put you in the hot seat first. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your position at the Y? How long have you been at the Y? Not very long. long. (laughs) And or just in the child care industry. Tell us a little bit about you. Sure. So I've been with the Y um, as the child care director since April. And I have worked with children in the child care field for over 20 years now. Nice, nice. Yeah, so she comes in with quite a bit of experience, and we're super excited. Um, She has survived (laughs) summer camp. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so the summer camp is over, school year has begun. Mm-hmm. And this is a big transition, right, yes. at the Y. So yes. tell us a little bit about what happens in that crazy transition week. So this week we are gearing up to get kids transported to school, um, the different schedules for the different schools and making sure they're where they're supposed to be. And so that's kind of where our focus is right now. And then um, preschool will start up in September. So we're excited as we transition from summer camp to that. We're going to kind of talk about both because... um we, uh, with childcare, with summer camp uh, being down, you're a little bit new to the area. What was funny was I saw the Y van out running around. Grace was taking her <laughs> on a tour of the schools um, and they were timing things out to see. So there's a lot that goes into. So if you see the Y van out there, um, gray vans uh, with our Y logos on the side, they're out there picking up school kids from which schools? We will be picking up from um, mostly new Philadelphia schools. Um, we're going to do Welty and West, East, and Central is the plan. And then also um, TCC as well. So, Sarah, do you have a why story? Like, what brought you to the why? I came to the why because I knew it was a good, it, there was such a good, well-known culture. And I was really looking for something, it, we're new to the area. So, I was looking for something that I knew I could be a part of and I feel like I have been embraced and that's a really good feeling. Um, my why story includes Elizabeth. Um, <laughs> when I first started, I brought my 12 year old, 12 year old daughter and Elizabeth just was so kind to her and um, told her about leaders club and invited her to be a part of that. So just coming in from not being from the area, we just felt really embraced. So that was awesome. Awesome. Elizabeth, don't let us forget to talk about Leaders Club right, at I was the end. Plug yeah, that. I got to plug that, <laughs> definitely. Um, we're going to shoot over to you uh, because you do have a wise story. I like do. you. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's talk about you. Um, what what are your what are you doing for um, child care? What's your title at the Y and how long have you been there and what's your wise story? Okay, so I've been at the Y forever. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, true. Um, it's true. I'm kind of a part. I'm kind of like a small little piece of the pie for childcare. I really just do preschool for them. Um, My title at the Y is I'm the youth and family coordinator. So all of our fun little family nights that we have pop up that I'm responsible for those. Um, You might see me at some community events here and there. I like to go to those. I also run leaders club. I'm their advisor. Um, So that's super, super fun. So she goes from these teeny tiny little kids to 
middle schoolers. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> that, big jump. <laughs> it is a big jump, and that's and that just proves to you that there's uh, and that happens a lot for these ladies as well as they go from preschool to after school. Um, it just shows you that uh, what a, a great uh, heart childcare people have because they really can. Um, be with all kinds of kid, kiddos but why story so uh I started I'm like a why kid I uh my earliest memory is I took uh baby swimming lessons was my first adventure with the why and then I grew up playing sports for the why um and then I worked at member service all through college to pay my way through school and then I left for a little bit came back to the why because it's like coming I always describe it as it's coming home to your family it is such a family uh, place everyone I work with is amazing and yeah. I love the mission of the why and I love I just love being a part of my community there yeah I remember the day that she walked back in and said well I'm coming to put an application I'm like just come on back <laughs> through the office like why why stop at the front desk <laughs> absolutely let's bring you back in so um, I've had the privilege to work with uh, Elizabeth side by side since she's been back which has been great and um we have a lot of fun together mm -hmm. so yeah look for us at your next event <laughs> right um, <laughs> and then grace um grace i've met uh through um just her being part of the ymca but she does uh we did a concert on the lawn and we got to see some more talent from her <laughs> uh, with her praise team that came in and did that and i was like wait is that <laughs> we got that's Grace. I feel like that's Grace. Uh, she's like part of our team too. Um, so it's always, it's been great. But uh, Grace, what do you do? Uh, how long have you been at the Y? And what's your little Y story? Um, technically, I guess it's been three years now that I've been at the Y. That was the finishing of my third summer camp, which is insane. I don't know how I made it through three years. <laughs> um, but I was a lead camp counselor this summer. So I was... Nice. Um, helping out with some leadership roles with that. Um, I'm the lead PM preschool teacher this year. And then I am also working in child watch this year too. Oh yes, that's right. I forgot about that. And I worked front desk too. For yeah. a while. <laughs> I'll go wherever they want we, me to go. <laughs> exactly. And that's what we love about why uh, leaders uh, that they really just are able to adapt and be put into a lot of dis different situations. So it's great. Um, shout out to your assistant teachers because I don't want to, oh, yes, I, I don't want to forget yeah, about that. I want to so. shout out Danielle Gilmore is my, uh, I call her my co-teacher. She is so passionate about pre school I'm so excited uh, to kick off this school year with her um, to see what we come up with create creatively um, and she's just I I can't say enough good things about her she is passionate she's incredible she's a natural so yeah. she's an amazing amazing and this partner. will be her year two so she started halfway um through last year with mm -hmm. us and uh, I'm really excited to have her for a whole year yeah yeah <laughs> and you have a new I have two. Okay. Um, so we were fortunate enough to find a male teacher this year, which is super exciting. That is um, exciting. You know, sometimes young boys really need a nice male figure in their life. So we're really excited for that. He'll be there two days a week and then he'll be sharing some time in after school as well. And then his name is Mr. Michael and then Miss Emily, who got to come on for the last couple of weeks of camp. She'll be there the other two days and then an oh, after great. school. So it's a nice balance. Yeah, it's nice. Um, it, look at enrollment. Are we getting some kiddos back from the previous year? Do we have older, younger? Where are we at? Right now, we we do have a few from last year, but so many of them went on to, to go to kindergarten. Um, we have a, a lot of newbies, a lot of young kids. Um, our preschool ages range from three to five. So we are definitely seeing a lot of little ones coming in. So we're excited. Great, great. Um, so what's a typical day look like for our preschoolers? What's that, what's that going to consist of? So uh, for my classroom, it kind of looks like they'll come in and um, we always have like little markers out with name tags and they practice writing their name. So they'll just trace their name the first half of the year. Okay. Um, it's kind of just a transition as people come in. Sometimes we have anxiety when we come into preschool for the first time. So we just ease them in and then they come over to carpet. Um, we do our circle time, which is super fun. Songs, dances, jobs, weather, all the fun things, get the judgers out. Uh, we do bathroom breaks twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, we always do some type of letter recognition and sound of the letter, a uh, story, a craft, and then we do some playtime as well. Okay. A lot of songs. 
And will yours look similar? Yep, pretty to similar to that. Yeah, uh, it may just be a difference in song choices, um, spicing things up with some new stuff, um, but pretty much the same. Yeah, since we okay. share a room, it's kind of easier just to follow the same schedule. Sure. But we all communicate really well. We get along really well, so it makes so, that a lot easier. Um, the difference between AM and PM is really... The, the student like how is there right. a difference in the way they react so do you feel like you definitely my goal is always I try to target my lessons or whatever I'm creating to their interest and that's going to mm -hmm. be different in both classes because right. we have different ages in both classes we have different interests in both classes so our structure might be very much the same but what we're actually doing in class might be different based on the kids we have okay and then do you, I think I was in there a few times last year, kind of checking things out and I saw like stations. Will there be stations Absolutely. again this year? And yeah. what are those stations? What do you look for in stations? So we cover the different domains um, there. We have a home living area for our kiddos um, to explore the kitchen and um, just kind of for more of creative play. There's our science and sensory area, writing and art center, in blocks because blocks is a big hit and we know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and um, what are some of the highlights that you'll look for throughout the year? Like, are there special events that are coming up or? Absolutely. Um, one of my favorite things is Christmas time. <laughs> so I love when Santa comes to visit. Um, our first field trip will be fun to go to our family engagements oh. that we do. Okay, so you do um, have field trips we as well. Field trips. Mm -hmm. Good. We're planning Good. on one a month. Yep. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. And that will be both classrooms together. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay, so they'll get to know their other the other counterparts in the other places. Um, did you guys go to preschool when you were little? Yeah. Yeah. Did you go to preschool with? I did not. <laughs> Now you know why there's a, there's a, there's issues here. <laughs> I did not go to preschool. I don't think I don't know. So I'm the oldest one around the table. Maybe they didn't have preschool when I was young. It's possible. We'll look it up. I should have looked that up, right? To see when did preschool actually start. Um, so can you remember any of it? Like, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yes. You do? What well, do you remember the most? Um, I had really awesome teachers at a Moravian preschool in Janayton that is still around. Okay. Um, but the teachers that were there actually created their own preschool out of their house and it's outside like nature based now um but i That's remember cool. when it would rain we had to go to the basement or like it's ohio so yeah. you know winter months when you're stuck inside yeah. they had this huge plastic green van and like it was just a huge play van and you had the three rows of the van and somehow I was always the driver. I don't know if that was like some foreshadowing into yeah. my van driving at the Y. Um, but my mom would always laugh when she would come pick me up and we were in the basement and I was driving all these kids in this green oh, van. Oh my goodness. That's hysterical. Elizabeth, you have a favorite preschool? Um, so memory? I went to Buckeye preschool. Okay. Um, I met my two best friends that I'm still friends with today. Oh my gosh. Uh, so of they're course. more like family at this point. But my favorite thing from preschool is obviously I had amazing educators who kind of planted the seed for me. Um, but I loved water activities in preschool. <laughs> like I loved like watching boats float. But you know, like they what had a little sensory boat. table. Exactly. <laughs> Go with the flow, you That's know. Right. <laughs> that was my favorite activity. I would get so excited when the water table came out. Ah, oh, so. very cool. I'm a little older, but I do have <laughs> one memory. Hey, at I, least you went. <laughs> I remember having to lay down on a carpet mat to take a nap. And I remember telling my teacher that I I don't want to take a nap. She <laughs> said, don't worry, when you're older, I promise you're going to beg to take a nap. And it's just so funny because I think about that all the time, trying to, <laughs> to do that. Um, but yeah, I, that's what I remember. I you remember taking it. Yeah, I didn't Tell come here I to didn't take a nap. Take a nap. <laughs> that's what, what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we would hear nowadays. What am I paying you for? Um, okay. Yeah. So, no, I don't have one to share with you. So, so sad. <laughs> um, so, what do you hope your students remember when they're older? Well, I, hoping I brought like what I always send my families and my students at the beginning of the year. And then I read it at graduation. But okay. it's a little like poem. It says, my promise to you. I promise you every day your child will learn something new. 
Some days they will bring it home in their hands and some days they will bring it home in their hearts and some days they will bring it home in their hearts. I think I read that wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> anyway, I, the biggest thing I want kids to take away is I hope that they, uh, learn how to regulate their emotions is one of the most important things. Um, but I hope that they always feel loved when they're in my presence. Mm -hmm. And you have, um, and I've watched her do this in many different after school type settings and leaders club, very big on the affirmations. I'm huge on affirmations. I yes. am statements are very important. Uh, they're not just important for children. They're important for adults. Um, there's a bulletin board at the Y that yeah. I created for that. I think it's really important. I am strong. I am smart. I am loved. I am loved is always my last affirmation. Yeah. No matter what. And I know I use it in my yoga classes as part of my meditation. I just finished look a little sweaty just finished teaching <laughs> silver sneakers and we did it in there mm -hmm. um it is it's important for every age group mm -hmm. um it's important for our our little ones even to hear our older people um learning about affirmations and so yeah we have a bulletin board that that they put up to, uh, that little Smith put up to help remind people mm -hmm. of some great affirmations what do you hope your students take away and remember when they get their age and they're doing a <laughs> podcast <laughs> Um, I would agree with Elizabeth, the feeling loved. Um, there's just so many different backgrounds that are coming into your classroom. And it's just really figuring out how to love each child the way that they need to be. You know, we don't know what home life is like. And, you know, if they're acting out in a certain way, there's a reason behind it. Right. It's not, you know, anger is a cover up emotion for other things. So that's something we definitely look into, but I hope they know how loved they are and that they do have the potential to be whatever they want to be. Um, I think around here, sometimes it gets a little bit um, closed boxed in a way, or like a lot of generations around here never leave the county. Mm -hmm. So it's very much, you know, embracing who they are and it, finding out what they want to do too. Right. Right. And I think that's, that's great. What do you hope? What do you hope for them? I hope that they do have good memories and that they have a passion to, to learn and to socialize and be ready for kindergarten and do great things. That's what we want to see ultimately. So mm -hmm. that's what I look forward to. Um, kindergarten prep, is that a big deal? Absolutely. It is. So tell us a little bit about that. So what we want to do is um, just basic introductions. Um, socialization is such a big part of kindergarten readiness, and we want to make sure that we're hitting that, um, along with learning letters, different sounds, making sure that we're reading and that they're experiencing things, and maybe not just sitting and doing worksheets or anything like that, but really getting it in there, tracing. Like they said, they do the name tracing and writing, which is so great. Um, there's different ways that we can experience those things, whether it's um, writing their letters in salt or just maybe having the education be a little bit more tangible. Mm -hmm. So that's how, what we want to do and we're excited to do. But we've actually implemented um, this little spot of feelings because when I was enrolling everybody, I really noticed that the parents um, when they listed what they wanted to see out of preschool, it was so much about emotion regulation. And I was happy because I'm a big advocate for it. it it's hard to learn if you're upset and you don't know why you're upset. Right. Um, so we want to make sure that they have the tools that they need. And we have these cute little guys um, that will help them if they need to hold their little, I have um, Scribble here and he's all of the emotions and he actually is the narrator of this book. Okay. Um, but this, that way, they, it's, it's something tangible. I'm feeling this way, and he's this way, too. And we're really excited to, to bring that into the mix. And you guys all have one. Yep, I have love. I have anxiety. I'm an anxious gal. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's probably what I would have, too. <laughs> um, okay, so that's, that's really cool. Because um, they do need to be able to uh, communicate how they're feeling what um what their needs are and i do think that um we're probably um do you feel like that's coming out of uh, it's these kids are three so these are covid babies right, right? COVID babies mm -hmm. yeah so they're coming um from that world where they really weren't out in the open very much during that first time do you feel like we're seeing more a hundred percent when you don't get to experience life like the rest of us have 
we don't know what that looks like. We don't know how to behave in public and those types of things. Um, so just it's just getting to the basics of, oh, I'm feeling sad. And my question is, well, is it okay to feel sad? And unfortunately, they always say no. And I'm like, yes, you can be sad. Yes, you can be angry. But we can't hit our friends. We can't scream and cry. And it's just a matter of giving them the opportunity to, to learn how to, even if they can't articulate it, to say, I'm this. <laughs> and this is it. This, this is, is how it. I'm feeling. Um, you know, I think that's great. That, that's really great. A couple of years ago, we had uh, preschool teachers on, and they brought a little preschooler with them, and it was probably one of our very first podcasts, and uh, Josh and I cracked the, uh, the entire time. This little girl was very, <laughs> <laughs> she loved the microphone. She was happy to Aww. be there, Aww. but they had brought her like all these fidget toys, and like she was showing all these things out of this basket. It was very funny. Um, but it is good to see that we're, there's tangible things that the kids are going to be learning that, um, and really how to express and communicate, which, um, I do think, uh, has been probably, and will be for some time, uh, one of the focuses that we're going to need in the early ages for a lot of our kiddos. I went back and I did, uh, pulled some. Um, just qu quotes from people and about preschool. And basically, um, Albert Einstein said that play is the highest form of research. What do you think about that statement? I think it's 100% true. That's how they learn how to explore. And there's so many teachable moments that we wouldn't think about. Um, it's as simple as I'm cooking eggs for my friend, you know, pretending to do those types of things. Um, blocks, is, blocks seems like a silly pastime but it's it's there's so many benefits to it because you are using your creativity um fine fine motor gross motor all of it is right there and socialization hey let's build mm -hmm. this together i'm building a castle will you build a fort just things <laughs> like that it's just so fun to see right um but yeah play is play is how they learn so elizabeth i'll go over to you and uh, i'm going to give you a quote let me tell you let tell you this quote and you just tell me what you think um children are not things to be molded but are people to be unfolded yes definitely um tell me a little bit more about how you think because i feel like you do this like i feel like you don't want to take you're not putting kids in cookie cutters and saying you're all going to be a bear today like this is you yeah. really do unfold kids yeah I, I do think it's important for kids to feel like they're in a safe environment to be able to express themselves whatever that looks like for them um you know if they're having if they're i use a lot of conscious discipline um which was a curriculum that i was taught um so i use a lot of that where it's like if they're angry for example go push on the wall five times go jump five times do five pull-ups and they're learning how to channel like it's okay to feel this way like what sarah was saying um but we have to be able to channel it correctly. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also really important to try to meet kids where they are and help them grow from there. And not every kid is going to be the same, like you said, cookie cutter. So, right. And then uh, I'll give you one just because I don't want you to feel left out. Okay. <laughs> right. So um, uh, there is a quote that says, if you want, if we want our children to move mountains, we first have to let them get out of their chairs. Yes. <laughs> yes yeah. uh, making a child sit still does not happen like we have to let them be who they are express themselves and like elizabeth said meeting them where they're at we can't change them like that they are who they are and that's who god created them to be so we need to help them channel who they are because not every kid's gonna want to dance either right, no. like, right? <laughs> and we have kids that sit there and s just stare at us you know like, they <laughs> can i go to the box center now like <laughs> yeah, is it snack good. time i hope we have goldfish today like that's where they're at mentally sometimes and that's okay <laughs> yeah right and i think one of the th one of the things i remember about taking uh my oldest to preschool when i was pregnant um with her brother she it went through this period of time where like she was a kid that like she would if she could have walked to preschool she would have like she was like <laughs> Miss out of the womb um on my own like very independent and um except for this moment in time and i figured out that she had figured out that she's not sure who's picking her up oh. right because mom's gonna have a baby what if 
And so the what if was always there. And I think that um, I was so um, just proud of the, the preschool teacher who sat me down and said, this is why this is happening. Like she just is a little bit nervous that you're not going to be the one to pick her up. Every day when you come, every day when you're picking up, just say, hey, don't forget if if you're, you know, if mommy has a baby, then grandma's mm-hmm. coming to pick you up, you know? So like she always knew. And you, you just don't even think about kids being stressed. Oh, but they are. Three, they yeah. are <laughs> three, three so four stressed. years old, that they can have those types of stressors. It didn't dawn on me as a parent. And I was so um, just happy with the preschool teacher that she was like, this is what's happening. This is why she's crying. Um, and so it was a learning experience for me. So I really say, you know, for someone who didn't go to preschool, <laughs> I will say that I did kind of get to go to preschool because I my kids went to preschool and actually learned. So I uh, encourage parents to listen to your teachers, listen and be ready to have that teacher or parent experience, um, but let them help guide you, especially if this is your first little one going to preschool. Um, there might be some tears, and it's okay. They're going to be there to, to take care of that. Um, t- Sarah, tell us how, do you have space still in we preschool? We still have space in AM and PM class. Great. Um, um, and how much, do they register? So what you're going to want to do is we have forms available on our website under the child care tab. You can download them, or you could come to the lobby and pick them up turn them back in and we'll get you all enrolled. We have about four spaces left in our AM class and six spaces left in our PM class. So, And what if, what if I can't afford preschool? What if that's one of the reasons that's holding me back from putting my kids in preschool? Well, our program is very affordable for non-members. It's um, 145 per month or 150 per month for non-members and 145 for members. Um, if you cannot afford that, we do accept JFS. So apply at JFS. They have publicly funded child care, and we will accept that. Okay. And I can also help if anybody needed that. Um, I can offer some guidance. Great, great. So they can get a hold of you how? Yes. They can give me a call at the Y or email me. Okay, great. And um, for those of you who need the wife's phone number, 330-364-5511. Sarah's extension is? 309. 309. But if you don't remember that, you can just ask for Sarah and they will um, transfer you back to her phone. Or you can uh, email her at Sarah with an H at the end at TUSCYMCA.org. That's right. Um, Any last thoughts? Any any words of wisdom for your... Um, well, I would just say to my future students and parents, I'm here to work with you. Um, I just want to put that out there. I'm huge on open communication. We're now a team. And if yeah. you're doing something at home that helps your child, tell me because I want the tips and tricks. And I'll tell you what I observe as well. So open communication is key yeah. to a successful school year. <laughs> yep. So. Yeah. And that goes throughout yeah. uh, high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm just excited for an awesome school year Um, with the staff that we have and the new kids coming in. um, Super excited. And like Elizabeth said, we're all on one team now and we all want that child to succeed on both sides. So that's awesome. Sarah? Well, I do want to mention for those of you who have enrolled, our open house is going to be August 30th, which is a Wednesday um, open house style from four to six come in, meet the teachers, check out the classroom, meet some of your friends, meet me, and I'll make sure um, paperwork's looking good on our end, and we're ready for a great year. So Awesome. Yeah, we're excited awesome. for that. All right. So this is what I call the 10 question speed round at the end. This is where we get to know a little bit oh, of boy. weird stuff about you. <laughs> um, and so uh, these are quick. So I'll start with your boss, right? <laughs> so that she has to take the hot seat on every right. question, number one, although she's already seen them. So what <laughs> What was the last book that you read, not including that one? <laughs> that was my answer, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> the last book I read was actually the Bible. Awesome. Oh, wow. Nicely done. <laughs> Mine is top that. <laughs> I know I can't oh, wow. top it. <laughs> <laughs> when you answer with the Bible, man, it's like <laughs> gauntlet. Okay. Uh, mine was How to Human by Carlos Whitaker. Okay. And mine was the last Hunger Games book because a new movie comes out this fall. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. We got a little bit. Favorite flavor of ice cream? Um, cookies and cream. Swirl with sprinkles. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? <laughs> Chocolate chip cookie dough. Ah, nice. What song makes you want to get up and dance? Ooh, 
I might have to pass because there's so many. Um, <laughs> maybe Groove is in the Heart by Delight. All right. I don't know that song, but I'm going to try to. Mine's Happy by Pharrell. Anything by Taylor Swift. Ooh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> dog versus cat. Both. Both. Dog. Cat. Oh. <laughs> Do you have a secret talent? I can recognize the song instantly. Within one second, I can re- recognize a song or a sound. If I only knew that, we could have, we could have worked that <laughs> into the podcast in some way. That would have been fun. All right. I'm really good at bingo. What? I am. How do you how do you get good I just at- get really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can even sit make that statement. <laughs> I'm really good at bingo. Okay. I don't think that's a talent, but we're gonna It is a talent. Have. Okay. <laughs> Grace? Um, I would say the playing the piano. That's not a secret talent. Well, it well, was. Well, playing bingo. <laughs> I didn't know what you said. Wait a minute. You, you're up on stage every Sunday or something. Yeah, That's but not a for secret. people that don't know me, I mean, I can play oh, several true. different instruments. Oh, so. really? Like kazoo? Like <laughs> what else? <laughs> no, absolutely not. A ukulele, acoustic guitar. Um, in band in high school, I played the xylophone. I marched with it. That set up like a piano. You can play drum set. Wow. Yeah. Well, I think you should start bringing those things in. You should. <laughs> you should all, just march your way in. I'll make Jay carry everything in for me. Shout out to Jay. <laughs> You're my groupie now. <laughs> He's the roadie. Right? <laughs> favorite TV show? Um, my favorite TV show right now is probably Reservation Dogs. Why do I not Never heard of that? that. I mean, Never heard so of it. so good, you guys. <laughs> Reservation Dogs. Okay. Uh, mine is One Calls the Heart. Uh, maybe Bridgerton. I've never heard of that either. It's a series of books. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> British. <laughs> British. British book. Can you say it like a Brit? British. <laughs> it's not very good. <laughs> no, I thought it was good. I thought that was very good. Favorite sport? Favorite sport. Soccer. Tennis and golf. Football. Mm. Favorite sports team? Buckeyes. Crew for soccer. Columbus Blue Jackets hockey. Ohio State or the New York Giants. My cousin played for both of them, so. Hmm. Keeping to... in the family. Yeah. Favorite actor? Ooh, Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are we doing crush or? <laughs> <laughs> I did look at these before, but I didn't have one planned. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll go with Matt uh, Mine's Aaron Krako. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I guess I'll channel my inner childhood Zac Efron. Does that count? High School Musical. <laughs> Actually, yes. I think that counts. He's oh. adorable. Yeah. Like even He's always even, a good time, you know? Right, right. Singing and dancing. Yeah. Talent you wish you had. I wish I could sing. I wish I could juggle. <laughs> During bingo? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could draw. I'm draw. very like musically inclined, but I, when I transferred from Catholic school to public school, I almost failed my art class in seventh grade because I just could not draw anything. And all these public school kids were so ahead of me. Huh? Yeah. You can't fail art. Uh, I was, I was pretty close to failing <laughs> art. Kathleen. I'm just well, um, here's something that we are going to attempt to bring back. Um, we did some homeschool art programs. We do have a homeschool program at the Y as well, um, where we do gym and swim. Uh, a couple years ago, we did an art program, and we are going to bring that back this year. So maybe Joella at the front desk, who's going to teach that. <laughs> yes, um, I, she is preparing now. She will let you in on some secrets. Yes, I can color. I can cut anything out, make a craft, but do not ask me to draw anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anything left, ladies? How was your first experience at podcasting? You ready to come back next week? Next just do continue. It. Just, do <laughs> just do it. Every week with preschool. <laughs> we even have a story every week. <laughs> oh, for sure. It's true. That. It is true. Well, hopefully you guys will come back at the end of the year. Maybe you'll bring a student with you and we can um, have youth on the air again, which was a, a lot of fun the last time that we did it. So thank you again for coming. Um, this is the 26th 
podcast has come to a, a nice close now. Remember, if you have a why story and want to be part of our podcast, just email me, Kathleen at TuskYMCA.org. Uh, we can't wait to hear from you. But take a moment to check out our Facebook page. We'll highlight some things that are going on in preschool as well as our family programs that are coming up. Uh, we have a craft show coming up. There's lots of fun stuff to do at the Y. Uh, so you definitely want to get back to school and back to the Y if you've been away. Um, also, uh, take a moment to share this podcast if you enjoyed it. We'd love for other people to see it. That's all I have for you today. Remember, it takes a big heart to help shape little minds. So be a big heart. We'll see you at the Y. <laughs>